All right. Um, I guess maybe it's uh, it's a good time to start. So welcome everyone again to our uh, seventh now um, uh, the seminar. Um, and um, so let me start with the presentation of the of our first speaker. You know, it sometimes takes some time for me. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, the 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 first speaker for today um, will be Professor Dmitry Kilin from the University of uh, North Dakota University. Um, and um, so he uh, obtained his uh, master's uh, from Belarus uh, State University in 1996, uh, 1996 uh, George Krilov. Um, and then <clears throat> he did uh, his PhD in Chemnitz uh, uh, with uh, Michael Schreiber in Germany. And after that, uh, uh, Dmitry had uh, a pretty long uh, history of uh, postdocian, uh, and as as I uh, if I count it correctly, it's about ten years. So it's a pretty sizable uh, experience. <clears throat> so first he he did uh, his postdoc with uh, Jeffrey China. Oh, S S Sina, how do you say that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry if if I if I spell it wrong. Um, and the second one was in University of Washington uh, with Oleg Presda at that time. So I guess uh, um, all the uh, Western coasts. Uh, uh, so yeah, the first one in, in, was University of Oreg uh, Oregon. And then uh, Dmitry moved to University of Florida with uh, David Mitchell. Um, and um, so in 2010, um, and um, basically, um, but yeah, so that that's basically until 2010, uh, and that's when he started his first um, uh, uh, independent position as research assistant professor, uh, first at the University of Southern, uh, South Dakota, 2010, and then um, um, he moved to uh, University of North Dakota, um, uh, where he, um, as an have been as an assistant professor since 2013 to uh, uh, 2015. And uh, and then he moved to uh, University of, oh wait, I, I think I, I screwed it up. Uh, so there was any yes, University of South Dakota. And then in 2015, he moved to uh, University of North, North Dakota. So where he is uh, uh, now uh, an, assistant, uh, an assistant professor. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Dmitry had uh, organized uh, uh, like a huge amount of various events, uh, ACS meetings, this symposia, um, and he was also a co-organizer of, uh, of the uh, various Telluride uh, uh, workshops. Uh, so he published uh, more than uh, 110 papers um, and uh, developed a lot of uh, uh, educational materials as well published uh, uh, numerous uh, book chapters. So, um, and uh, Dmitry's uh, research interests are uh, also in non-adiabatic dynamics, uh, and uh, he had uh, a lot of experience with various types of uh, uh, materials and types of approximations, um, and uh, very good for this seminar, especially, is that he had developed a number of codes and methodologies, um, and um, apparently, he worked with a, a, a range of approximations as well. So that's what uh, his talk will be about today. Um, kind of, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll hear more about uh, his kind of uh, views about various types of approximations. So with that, um, let's uh, welcome Dmitry and uh, Dmitry, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Alexei. Thank you for a uh, nice detailed introduction that I, I never heard about myself. <laughs> thank you. And uh, special thanks for organizing this uh, series series of um, online seminars, very appropriate and, and uh, timely, and uh, bring in a community of um, computational chemists and, and uh, theorists uh, together. So, um, in a second, I will start uh, sharing screen and showing slides. And um, the um, talk will be more applied. At least I will start with uh, applications. And uh, in case there will be 
uh, interesting questions, you will we'll go to the um, detailed derivations and, and theories if, uh, if time allows, maybe in the questions and, and uh, answers um, section. So um, applications. Um, of um, quantum dynamics methods to different uh, systems, and um, depending on the on the system, one uh, is using different approximations. So it's not possible to cover everything, but uh, there will be examples of uh, nanostructures of different dimensionalities and molecules, including chemical reactions. So um, if uh, we need to speak in the audience of um, experimental background. One of the common motifs uh, in chemistry is um, that research is consisting of synthesis and characterization. And uh, synthesis is like building or atomistic models or borrowing X-ray diffraction structures and characterization is uh, getting properties. So, um, one of the interesting, challenging words of study questions is to check um, what happens to materials and molecules upon photo uh, excitations, photo excitation, and um, there are different ranges of uh, processes. So, upon bringing a system into excited state, it may exhibit photoinduced charge transfer. It may non radiatively decay, it may um, exhibit photoluminescence, it may show some um, multi electron effects. And if one takes into account the nuclear degrees of freedom explicitly, bonds may break and form and exhibit chemical reactions facilitated by uh, photo excitation. So, in order to deal uh, with this uh, challenges when needs a tool box with tools. And uh, there is a plenty of um, software pieces, uh, including the software pieces developed by the chair and organizer of the of this meetings, uh, you say, but sometimes one may um, need to add a little add on thing to um, treat specific regimes of processes in, in, a, in a specific material. So here is um, the only slide with equations. Well, I'm exaggerating, but uh, uh, there, there will be more, but basically it is um, what we are doing with uh, students and postdocs. So if one starts from the beginning, uh, the only exact thing is molecular Schrodinger equation, and uh, one typically does born oppenheimer separation uh, of uh, nuclear and uh, electronic variables and uh, treat them uh, separately for reducing numerical cost. But they are not isolated, and uh, their coupling can be brought back. One of the ways to bring it back it's, is through non adiabatic uh, coupling. And then, so um, there are a variety of ways to include this non adiabatic coupling in order to explore how electronic states uh, change in time. And uh, one of the most popular methods is uh, surface hopping. But um, one can make a little bypass and uh, take these couplings in perturbative way and uh, treat them as perturbation to density operator equation of motion for electronic degrees of freedom. The qualitative results are uh, coming to the same basket uh, in the a, in a same uh, range of magnitudes, but it is uh, somewhat speed up of uh, computational cost. Um, so, uh, here is the um, credit to uh, my collaborators, Professor Svetlana Kilina and uh, Sergei Tretiak. 
So uh, here is different view on the same thing. So if one looks on the um, procedure to describe food induced processes, then one can uh, follow the on the fly coupling procedure with uh, molecular dynamics, then getting non elliptic couplings, and then they can be used in a different variety of methods, um, out of which uh, reduced density metrics is a little cheaper than, than uh, others. And it is based on uh, uh, extension of wave function into density operator and is based on uh, uh, phonemic equation of motion with additional perturbational terms, which are worth of speaking if uh, later if time allows. So in case we are focusing on uh, applications, then um, one may want to look with care what is done on experiment to arrange some uh, level of um, cooperation. And uh, the way to make friendship with um, experimental effort is to interpret and predict um, observables, expectation values. And uh, in case there are um, state uh, of quantum system at this, uh, of the model in a certain slice of time, whether we um, present, whether we describe it as um, uh, wave function or, or density, one can uh, get the observable and check if it is if it does agree with uh, experiment. And yeah, in, in the center, um, one can think that um, experimental data are like a vital moisture for theories and uh, applicational uh, considerations. So I'll focus on a um, few applications related with emission of light back from the photoexcited materials. And um, I'll try to my, my best effort to match the uh, limits of, uh, of time. So there are several um, challenges in uh, describing uh, photo, uh, photo induced light emission. And um, one, of, one of them is that uh, if we deal with uh, materials connected to um, composed of heavy elements, then one needs to carefully take care of spin, spin fluid and uh, uh, spin orbit uh, coupling. So it will be like a zoo or kaleidoscope of um, very brief, like minute long stories. So in case one is looking for, uh, photo uh, for optical transitions between electronic states, um, they are happening in the front quantum windows in resonance with uh, quantum states of, of nuclei. And um, we are trying to match this uh, feature by simplified and quicker numerical procedure. So specifically, um, I'm going to show how one can neglect quantization of nuclear modes, but still get the uh, shift of the center and line broadening of the um, emission spectrum. So it is quite a basic exercise. So um, if one runs the if one uh, does run the molecular dynamics and it is sufficient to run it in the in the ground state, then um, due to contractions or negations of nuclear modes, um, system is browsing through phase space and exploring different regimes of electronic transitions. And if one integrates these transitions for classical path approximation for classical nuclear modes for, um, uh, it's not a theorem, but for a variety of applications, one is able to reproduce the um, emission spectrum in a, in a reasonable agreement with experiments. So this example is uh, titanium dioxide uh, nanorods, which are emitting at the border of uh, UV and visible. And uh, this mechanism of thermal broadening was um, interestingly sufficient. Uh, another example when we practice this uh, broadening is uh, silicon uh, quantum dots, which uh, also 
give qualitative agreement with experiment of uh, freezing silicon quantum dots increases their brightness uh, and uh, makes the profile uh, narrower. So I would like to make a brief stop here on the popular material of uh, metal organic frameworks. So um, here is one of the modes that does serve as a sensor for explosive materials. So in the middle of this uh, cavity, there is a deuterium and uh, on the right, there are uh, emission profiles of this metal organic uh, framework with and without this adsorber. So uh, there are panels for experiment and theory and both of them show about five fold uh, shortening of the um, photoluminescence intensity. So this is rationalized that uh, in presence of this uh, cavity adsorbate, um, it brings additional uh, states and uh, facilitates charge transfer states in, in the gap that substantially uh, darken the oscillator strengths. And it was done in um, ridiculously simple approximation. So it is just exploration of uh, classical path in the ground state and exploration of uh, oscillator strength values along, along the path. So it was sufficient uh, and matching the experiment. But um, the earlier couple of slides were based on Kasha's uh, rule, spectroscopic rule, when the emission happens from the lowest uh, possible transition. It's not always uh, truth. Sometimes the transitions may happen from the uh, second excited, third excited, or transitions between several excited states. So um, we did try um, to look at the metal cluster um, functionalized with uh, DNA strands, which makes it uh, reasonable for um, bioimaging applications. And the methodology was um, based on exploration of ground state trajectory, exploring non-adiabatic couplings, and then feeding them into a reduced density matrix equation of motion, then exploring all possible transitions between all uh, uh, pairs of states, not only valence and conduction band, but also uh, transitions inside conduction band and inside valence band. And then uh, the transitions were uh, different. Different transitions were activated as long as system uh, cascading down from highly excited state down to the lowest available. And all of these um, uh, transitions were contributing to time integrated emission that um, uh, was in a reasonable accord with experiment. Um, there are some um, applied features that silver nanoclusters are uh, quite tricky uh, system and they are uh, bright or dark depending on several factors, including uh, oxidation state and spin multiplicity. So this was a uh, uh, specific magic number match between uh, uh, oxidation multiplicity and, and size of the cluster. But uh, here is the uh, dashed and uh, solid are um, experiment and, and computation. So another, um, it, based on the clock, it looks like I do have 10 minutes. Uh, so another application is um, um, to check if the number of charge carriers stays constant during the quantum dynamics. So there are two complementary uh, processes. One, when um, several electron hole uh, pairs convert into uh, one electron hole pair with larger energy, so Auger recombination, or uh, inverse uh, process when uh, one uh, relatively high energy electron hole pair converts into multiple uh, electron hole pairs uh, um, 
which is referred as uh, down conversion in uh, spectroscopy or multiple uh, exciton generation in uh, photovoltaics, photovoltaics uh, uh, community. So we were trying to apply both matrix elements of this uh, multi electron transitions and uh, quantum dynamics of photo excitation to a model of uh, confined uh, red halide uh, perovskite model. So looking for comparison of different possible channels of um, degradation of photo excited state. And um, the relative uh, of the absolute and relative numbers did show that uh, the um, longest uh, is the non-radiative recombination. Then uh, there is a uh, radiative recombination with emission, which can happen either from the lowest or from uh, excited state. And the quickest one was uh, the channel of uh, multiplying number of, of carriers if uh, things were done, uh, were done correctly. So, um, so this couple of images show the time dependent photoluminescence and integrated photoluminescence, which uh, primarily happens at the gap. And here is the comparison of the uh, rates of this multi-electron processes as a um, function of uh, excitation energy, which starts at the threshold of uh, two gaps, which is expected from energy conservation. So the rate of the, at, at, um, at this threshold was about uh, 10 femtoseconds, uh, quite uh, quick. And rationalization, interpretation of this uh, a little strange number was that uh, due to quantum confinement, the uh, particles have to be close to each other, which uh, leads to enhancement of interaction. Like, uh, uh, even if people are not big friends, if they're traveling in the same elevator, they, they have to interact, right? So uh, like this, uh, uh, electrons and holes are confined in quite small uh, object. And interestingly, a year later, um, one of the experimental uh, experts, Michael Gretzel, was trying to assess the multiple electron generation uh, rate in a similar uh, kind of red halide perovskites, and uh, he found it uh, 90 femtoseconds, which uh, can be that we are just uh, less than order of magnitude error, which is not bad for this process, or uh, it could be the uh, fact that uh, the resolution of their uh, time resolved apparatus uh, didn't allow to look on the um, quicker processes. So uh, another aspect is um, processes uh, with uh, spin flip, which demand the spinner approach, which uh, is it becomes available in a um, larger and larger number of uh, computational chemistry software. So um, um, the most important uh, is to check how the spin orbit interaction is implemented and uh, in uh, some of the software it is included in the perturbative, perturbative way, but from the point of view of applications, it uh, opens the door to describe materials uh, that are composed of, uh, of heavy elements. So here is um, one of the examples. So it is also lead halide perovskite uh, quantum dot uh, with a couple of specific features. Unlike the previous one, so the perovskites are like uh, lattices with uh, lead centers, uh, collides bridges between centers, and then there are cavities which are uh, filled with cations. On the previous example, it was um, methyl ammonium uh, cation, and here it is uh, cesium cation. Also, to support the confinement uh, and make this uh, quantum dot uh, cubic quantum dot stable, uh, it is covered by a shell of um, uh, ligands, surfactants, and since it is an, to some sort an ionic crystal with anions and cations exposed to the surface, 
in order to make it uh, fully covered, uh, one applies uh, dual style uh, surfactants, anionic and cationic uh, cations. And um, the center image uh, shows that um, the orbitals and charge density are quite confined inside in the body of this uh, nanocrystal because the shell of this uh, surfactants serve as an uh, insulator. So on the right, there is a tracking. So this orange and uh, blue stripes is tracking of the uh, distribution of um, deviation of charge density from the bronze state distribution. So orange means uh, excess of uh, charge density compared to bronze state distribution electrons and blue corresponds to luck, which are holes as function of time. So if one excites uh, above the gap, as time passes by, the uh, electrons drift to bottom of the conduction band, holes drift to the top of the uh, valence band, and as time passes by, they may or may not emit. And the lower panel shows uh, the emission, time dependent and integrated, and it looks like most of uh, emission happens at, at the band gap. So here, maybe it, it doesn't look very spectacular, but we did carefully explore the rates of radiative and non-radiative uh, transitions composed a ratio of these two things and uh, compared it with uh, photoluminescence quantum mute uh, measured for the same class of systems, maybe a little bigger on experiment. And uh, this quantum mute was about 50%, quite close to uh, experimental, experimental observations. So even if uh, there were a range of approximations, uh, maybe it was either cancellation of errors or it was just good luck of uh, catching uh, most correct uh, important mechanism. And, uh, oh, was it no? and um, here is the little uh, illustration of, uh, of the same orange and blue uh, electron and hole density inside the slice of this quantum dot, dot as time passes by. Um, it um, doesn't bring new information compared to previous slide, but it shows that uh, neither excess or lack of uh, charge density goes beyond the limits. So the ligands serve well as uh, insulators and um, redistribution of charge later on is associated with uh, photo emission. So, um, um, I would like to ask the chair how I'm doing this time. Uh, yeah, I, I guess like maybe five minutes uh, more is fine. Just uh, okay. as much as you need to finish. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a really um, interesting work about polar emis emission of polaronic states when one injects electron and hole and looks for emission of the system. And uh, there is a redistribution of, of charge and uh, uh, basically we found that negative polarons are thousand times brighter than uh, uh, positive because of some microscopic analysis and match between normal modes and electronic transitions. But uh, in the remaining maybe four minutes, I would like to quickly skim through photochemistry part. So uh, one uh, ma major challenge is formation of um, uh, isomers and uh, upon photo excitation, there are several pathways. One can recombine, one can go to higher state, one can uh, uh, break the bond. And um, the major application we are doing here is based on um, uh, the pulse area theorem from quantum optics is that uh, Rabi, amount of Rabi flops in the system depends on the integrated intensity rather than uh, individual profile of laser pulse. So in some sense, the laser field, which is uh, CW continuous or a train of pi pulses 
have some analogy. They induce, uh, if, if they are exposed to the same uh, time range, they give the same um, amount of flops between ground and excited state. So it can be used for um, decomposing the uh, um, um, charge of the weapon. And here, um, I think it will be the last one and I want to focus on it. So uh, maybe it is the most interesting thing. We are considering photo-induced decomposition of metal organic complexes with lanthanum and some organic shells. So um, it is the dynamics upon continuous irradiation with train of uh, pi pulses, which is used as an approximation to mimic CW high intensity uh, uh, irradiation. So it brings uh, rich dynamics that can be interpreted either as decomposition of complex or as metal cluster uh, facilitating some rich uh, catalysis for these hydrocarbons. So if we look onto stages uh, of the photoreaction and convert masses of the fragments developed at each stage uh, into this distribution, then first stage we go from the heaviest uh, component to the uh, like this from five carbons to three and two carbons, you see uh, these components. If you go further and continue the dynamics, um, so we, we, we see here this C2 uh, component. And if you continue the dynamics further, um, there is a complete departure of this uh, hydrocarbons from lanthanum. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this helps to uh, compute mass spectrum of this photoreaction. It does agree with uh, experiment in, uh, to some extent. And the application is um, uh, thin film deposition for, uh, for computing. So there are also applications. I'm, I'm finishing. I understand that uh, time limits. There are also applications on uh, uh, not fragmentation, but photopolymerization of um, of uh, material that is a precursor for quantum uh, silicon quantum nanostructures, and um, there is a um, um, results on um, proton tunneling in the combustion reaction, which substantially lowers the activation energy and uh, is responsible for uh, hypergolic fuels uh, working well for the um, rocket fuel. So zoo of applications, uh, several approximations and um, acknowledgements uh, to um, students, postdocs, granting agencies and uh, to all of you for your kind attention. All right, thank you very much, Dmitry. So um, I guess we will Continue to the questions. Uh, so yeah, everyone, please feel free to um, uh, type your questions in the chat. Um, but I guess uh, the first question was from uh, Sergey. So Sergey, do you still want to conti continue like discussing this? Like in ah, perhaps sort of like uh, this question was about uh, comparison of Rankin factors in the approximate method and more exact traditional methods for individual transition for individual transitions for photoluminescence and if there is sort of like any correlations uh, versus sort of my point is individual transition versus the overall shape of the uh, uh, line shape uh, which is thermally broadened. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sergey. It's um, um, correct formulation of the uh, problem. It is definitely has to be done. Uh, and uh, here is the reason why it is not yet done, although it, it seems natural. So uh, these individual transitions will be substantial and uh, for small objects, for molecules with noticeable uh, Juan Ruiz, uh, noticeable nuclear reorganization and uh, large vibrational frequencies. And there, the comparison will be for exact transponder and against uh, this uh, scanning of the trajectory and this approximate shape. So it's uh, 
it, it, it's known from, from, the, from the beginning. In the extended systems with heavy ions, with very low uh, frequencies and lower contribution of, of quantum effects, like when zero phonon uh, energy is uh, negligible or at least uh, small, the um, scanning of uh, oscillator strengths along classical path trajectory will be substantially better. But in this case, doing a full uh, calculation of uh, Frank quantum modes uh, can be uh, expensive, but one day it should be done. Does it answer uh, your question? Yeah, thank you so much. Cool. Um, I guess the next one was from Andre. Um, so, so and, and I saw Dmitry already answered, but maybe you want to continue the discussion. Mm -hmm. oh. No? You, it you <laughs> Actually, so, uh, it was related to the, uh, to the previous questions, and Dmitry provided a comprehensive answer uh, okay, just cool. a minute ago. OK, good, good. Cool. Yeah, so, so I, I had uh, another question to Dmitry. So, um, so when he was talking about the multiple axiton generation modeling, so my understanding is that you would need to include some some sort of electron electron scattering um, you know, to be able to you know qualitatively describe this. And so I'm not sure if whether he was using like this single particle approximation or did you go somehow beyond the, the, that uh, level of approximation? Could you comment on that, please? So uh, at the initial uh, let me check. Yeah, the microphone is on. Um, at the initial consideration, we did uh, just uh, Coulomb matrix elements between in the basis of uh, Kuhn-Sham orbitals mm -hmm. for, for this, uh, and um, then there was a next correction to uh, include polarization. Mm -hmm. But uh, the qualitative uh, first result was uh, just based on. Oh. Uh, so, so you included that, right? mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it, so it's not just a single particle like Koncham or basis and like, making this uh, excited slater determinants as, as your basis functions. Okay, uh, and then uh, maybe another question on, on this uh, decomposition of this land like um, actinate uh, compounds. So did you go, did you need to go to like some multi-reference uh, uh, electronic structure uh, uh, levels to be able to describe this bone breaking or? Uh, um, it was our, our, our great fear that we have to, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we, instead of uh, rigorous proof, we took on the level of proof coincidence with experiment, which was, obta which was obtained uh, without multi-reference. Mm -hmm. So I, I just find it just by agreeing with experiment, or is there any other kind of, kind of um, you know computational way to prove it? Once again, just uh, like is there any like computational way to justify the use of simpler approximations? Okay, um, let me show. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, share your slides. Is it uh, is it sharing something? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, in case we do want to uh, take uh, into account the multi electron nature, uh, one can uh, go with uh, the, uh, for example, uh, Beta Salpeter equation for for like um, coupled. Uh, pairs, but here is a little words how we go back into uh, independent orbital uh, orbital picture. So if the excited state uh, is a composed a superposition of pairs of uh, like particles and uh, holes occupied unoccupied with uh, decomposition uh, coefficients, then um, um, one can explore these coefficients, and in case if there is a leading term, leading uh, uh, coefficient that is substantially bigger than others, then one can uh, 
uh, admit that a certain electron hole uh, pair uh, contributes the most to the actual actual excited state, and it kind of opens the door to justify uh, the, these approximations. Um, okay. If so, so it, it, and it, it, are you saying that this is the case for for your lantern complexes, right? Yes. Yes. And um, and another argument uh, because it was um, quite surprising that things did um, with very, very strong approximations uh, something did agree with experiment one uh, another um, argument for coincidence that in some sense bone breaking events should occur if you just hit the system so in some sense uh, the cycles of uh, populating and depopulating uh, communicate the uh, energy to nuclear modes because of the uh, Juan Ruiz, because of a nuclear reorganization. Each cycle, uh, one, uh, one goes from uh, stimulated absorption and stimulated emission. So net amount of excitation stays uh, constant. It doesn't accumulate electronic energy, but during the period when it is excited and uh, de-excited, there is accumulation of uh, uh, nuclear elongation and nuclear kinetic energy that would break the the bonds that are the uh, the, the loosest, the, the weakest. Um, we did check uh, if one can reproduce the experiment by uh, numerical modeling of just ramping up heat, and then it gives um, different fragments. It goes through different reaction pathways. So there is something inside the methodology that we uh, we practice. Uh, it is not, not just heating, but uh, uh, yeah, the yeah, main, yeah. main thing is how to communicate energy that will break the, the bonds. Right, like if, I think if you just heat it, then kind of de de uh, deposit this excess kinetic energy in all modes kind of equally, but if you do follow some photo excitation process, then you channel it to particular Yeah, yeah. I, I like your, your interpretation. So it is targeted uh, excitation of a specific nuclear mode. Right, yeah, yeah. Because you have like excited state gradients and that's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. okay, I see. Uh, all right, uh, yeah. I think, um, so it, is this, I know that you have some package that uh, can do all this type of calculations. Is, is it anywhere on, online uh, that we can use um, it? It is not yet user friendly, but uh, we, we plan to bring it into uh, user friendly form. And um, it, it, it's not so big of uh, of a package. It's just a set of scripts that um, executes oh, okay. computational chemistry software. So uh, right now we are executing uh, VASP as a as a tool, but it can be basically um, going through um, executing another piece of software multiple times during the uh, simulation. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, hopefully we'll see it soon at some point. All right, guys, um, I think uh, if there are no more questions, um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, our speakers.